Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our Zoom Hubble Bubble launch presentation in Q&A with uh, Gabriele Chiave and Christy Wright. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, be in this call and present the two participants um, who are the extended part of the extended Moi family and uh, we are presenting one of the the beautiful light fittings that is a little bit delayed because obviously we would have been in Milan to present this uh, before. But here's the chance to do it in Zoom and uh, I will give it away to Gabriella and Christy. Hello, thank you Laszlo for the introduction. Um, <clears throat> as Laszlo just said, uh, we had originally hoped to launch the product that we're showing today, which is the Hubble Bubble in Milan. Um, if anybody's been on our website in the past few weeks, uh, we had a little digital brand experience. So please, if you haven't seen it, go check it out, where we previewed the lamp. But today we will reveal it in the flesh with Gab at his house. And Gab, I'd like to thank you for opening your home to us today to, uh, to spend time with us and to give us a little bit of the inspiration and the story behind the product. Thank you, Christy. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Um, welcome to my house. That's the place we're going to launch the piece today. Very happy and proud to be here. Nice, nice. As Laszlo um, said, we are all part of the Marcel Wonders family in one way or the other. And um, could you give us a little bit um, your backstory, um, how you came to Marcel Wonders, how long you've been with him, your role there at the studio, who you are? Of course. So um, I'm Gabriel Chiave, I'm creative director uh, at the studio, meaning that with Marcel, we oversee all the projects from the studio creatively, from interior design, from product design, and our directions and so on. Uh, I'm Italian originally, so um, I've been studying in Milano, industrial design, product design, and then 13 years ago, 14, 13 years ago, I lose the count sometimes, I came to Marcel uh, studio first as a product designer. As I was studying in product design in Milan, and as now we're following, as I said, all the other projects. Uh, so working also with Moi since I arrived, basically, so since 13 years, through all the pieces that the studio has um, has output. And so, in a nutshell, that's uh, that's who I am. Nice. <clears throat> Curious to hear some anecdotal stories from your 13 years of working at the studio and with Moi. Um, well. You know, I've known you for 10 years now, and uh, what I can say about you is that you are very passionate about product design, but I think our audience would be curious to hear, have you always wanted to be a designer? Has it been a linear journey to this point? Well, I must say that not always I want to be a designer, but there is been some, some things that some, some situation that probably brought me there, and of course you realize them a bit after. Um, my parents were diplomats, so I grew up abroad all over the world, from Africa to South America to Italy and so on. So, of course, I grew up with an open mind towards other cultures and other societies and other uses and customs and, you know, how to, people would live and, and do things. So I think that was very special. Um, towards uh, another area is that my parents were collecting, collecting furniture, antiques, antique furniture and antique objects. So... Basically, I grew up with uh, the understanding of what uh, furniture from 1700 would mean and how, why it was done that way and so on. And, uh, and my parents, my father was collecting like antiques from the 20th century. So I was surrounded by objects and mostly also traveling so much, you would always change your house and your, and your walls, but not the pieces. So really, I grew up with a certain connection more than a, than a place. I grew up constantly with the connection to my to the, to the products and pieces and furniture which surround me. So it gave me some really deep uh, connection with, with, uh, with, with that kind of realm. And that was probably one of the consequences. And another one, which was uh, another one, which is a really fun story is that before doing design, when I was around 18, 17, 18, before starting design, I was really because of that past of antiques, I had a certain point really passionate and I was always passionate about mostly that time in archaeology. Mm -hmm. So uh, at 17, uh, my parents were living in Syria. So I had the chance to go for six months in Syria in the desert with uh, 
expedition of archaeology and and I had the chance to go and start digging in this kind of uh, old uh, old cities uh, and we were digging for six months and we went through through phases because that's how you do when you do archaeology until reaching cultures of 2500 before Christ mm -hmm. and we discovered an, an, an enormous amount of amazing pieces vases paints vases painted ropes skeleton stumps and it was it was amazing because then we had also to restore them and so you you would touch and be presencing the beauty of so of what what was done so many 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 years ago people that crafted such amazing pieces that we could have the chance today to rediscover to see and to understand their past and to understand how they were living how how we came until today who we are because of them so and, and that connection was so beautiful but of course then i saw i thought it's it's a archaeology is a very special expertise and in profession, however, it's, it's a bit of a dead end in the way that you just explore the past and you bring it today to understanding, but at a certain point I thought also the fact of creating the new past for the future is something that I felt very connected to the idea of having, creating beautiful and meaningful things for, for the future, for people to, to understand how our culture today is. So I think this, this made basically in a nutshell uh, make me probably become a designer, uh, hmm. a product designer. So. I think we have a similar background of, I also traveled around and moved a lot. So you get this connection with objects that are, is completely different. And it defines also your notion of space, the hmm. object defines yeah. space. And I'm sure that's why we both uh, work with Marcel because of his respect for the past, his kind of, um, <clears throat> It, the importance of the product that surrounds us. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the, the studio itself, um, the kind of mission of the studio, how you work on projects, and yeah. the, the philosophy of, of, of the brand? I can, I, just, I, I can point out a few, few ways we see things in the studio, um, and uh, which is a bit connected to what I was just explaining, but rather it's what Marcel's mission was for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I think is what you can see in our projects, both in interiors and product. We are, we are having a very humanistic approach to design. And when I say humanistic approach design, it's because we want to celebrate people, we want to give people, respond to their needs, respond to their dreams, create things that really reflect that need of this, 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 this uh, need of people. But when I say humanistic, it's not just the way of doing design as we in Italy or as, as typical design studio does, which is really driven by functionality, mm -hmm. by mass production, by the industry, which of course we have to, to deal with. But our humanistic way is to really give to people what they love to give people, to reach not just mm -hmm. the mind of people, but to reach their heart. And, and, and therefore, all our projects are really speaking about that, are really trying to, to, to have a storytelling, to having an appearance, or to having a, a kind of background which really triggers emotions in people and makes them love the piece and surprise them and makes it, makes it magical or playful or, or, you know. So that's one approach of how we do things. Uh, and another one that is linked to what I was explaining is also that uh, for, for the studio it's very important, it's always been very important to speak to, part, to the past culture, to speak to what has been done before, to embrace our heritage, to embrace craftsmanship, to embrace what other people have done before us because you can't create the future without embracing your past. You can't create today the next pass without knowing what has been done before. And this is in all kinds of levels. If we do a hotel, we speak about the culture of the place the hotel stands in. If we do a product, we trigger memories, antique memories of antique generation, or we use a craft that is being used for an, in a traditional way, but we use it today in a modern way to create, to bring the tradition onwards the future. So it's something that is very, very, very strong for us to to use that, that richness, that, that heritage and societies has built in the past, to use it today to keep it alive. Mm -hmm. and, and whether it's a tradition or whether it's also beautiful memories that belongs to us, to our grandfathers, to our childhood, 
I think it's very precious to to give this to design to make it to reach that emotional level beyond functionality because mm -hmm. we again we respond to people's dreams and we don't respond just to people's thoughts so it's it's a bit this approach that I would like to share with you today that is connected to mm -hmm. what yeah. we will see soon well I think today we're launching a product that hopefully will touch the hearts and minds of our audience um, so if we shift gears a bit um, maybe you could um, reveal the product today that we're talking about the Hubble bubble uh, and tell us a little bit more about the inspiration that came with the design of the lamp. I would love to do that. So we'll do a little magic trick now for you guys. So it's a bit more interesting. I will just do this and then I will just disappear quickly from the camera in order to let mm -hmm. you have a chance. Surprise. Uh, what, do, what do we see here, Gab? So as you can see here, it's of course the house has a really big ceiling and you can see this is a Hubble bubble, but these three Hubble bubbles placed together in very different positions in the space. There is a small one, which is, mm -hmm. as you see, it's a, it's a, it's a ring. So I don't know how to do the camera. It's a yeah. ring that holds bubbles of light attached to the ring. And there is a medium, a small one, medium one, and another small one on the back. And basically it's, it's called Hubble Bubble. I'll make you a little tour of them so you understand better what we're thinking about. So we'll fly a little bit around this beautiful magical soap bubbles because that's basically where the inspiration came from. And as nice. you see them, this is the one circle I was mentioning. So we, so we see kind of glass bubbles on, the, uh, on a metal frame, I think. So there is a beautiful metal ring, flat ring. Yeah. That holds magically these bubbles. Now we'll go in detail quickly. And then as you see here again, that's the small part. And then you can see all together, of course, in space here, they're really placed freely, uh, very organically random, in a beautiful floating position. And that's the small one, the medium one you can see now here. And that's how they come all together. Nice. And it's an amazing, amazing set. In the case, of course, you can feed one, but now here you have three. And where, where did the idea of the Hubble Bubble come from? Like the name itself makes me very curious. Maybe you could tell us a bit the so, inspiration behind. I'm going to be here on the side on the dark, so you see when I speak. Okay, like. that's nice. Um, I think that's really speaking about memories and romanticism and connected to past past emotions of people hubble bubble comes from soap bubbles of course it's you know the typical soap bubbles that when we were kids all of us had experience with or a little friend had experience with so it's something beautiful it's a poetic uh, metaphor of a memory that belong for uh, that belong to most most people um, and therefore, this 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 lamp really represents that cloud of soap bubbles that you'd run uh, around with or run towards with when you were a kid, and then magically this cloud of soap bubbles would just disperse in the air and magically float there in, in space, and without understanding, suddenly they were gone. So, what you see here is really the representation of that of that beauty of the beauty of, of lightness, it's, play, it's a playful design, it's a happy design because finally it connects directly to happy moments of your childhood. And therefore, Hubble Bubble is just a bit of cloud bubbles coming together and a ring that just frees them in space and time, in space in this case because of this, but in time because it's in your memory. Mm. So that's how, how you can explain a bit the concept. I think part of the magic when I first saw the lamp um, has a lot to do with the technology that's used behind the lamp, which is our, our trademark technology called electric sandwich, which I think mm -hmm. gives, gives some of the magical beauty to the piece. Could you explain to our audience a bit, because you've worked with this technology for many years, give us a little bit of an explanation and how we innovated it in this, in this lamp. Well, of course. So, Electro Sandwich is a technology that we used, uh, I think, since now 10 years, 10, 12, 12 11, maybe 10 years. And it's, it was, a, it was a, an idea that came uh, when we were analyzing a project from an external designer. And 
was a lot of tubes with cables, which was the normal way to bring electricity. And the sketching and so on, checking out, and Marcel saying, well, but why, don't we, why don't we just take the cables out? And now we use a structure to convey electricity to our, to our, to our light points. Yeah. So in a way, of course, the thing is that when you design a chair or a sofa or something or fork, what you sketch is what you see and more or less is what you get. But in this case, it's driven by technology, new technology, by light, by everything. So you need to really test and try. So in the studio, but also in Moy, for two, three years before it was perfect, we really experimented with different pieces, with different coatings and different things and the lighting and so on. So it took a lot of time to, 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 to create the perfect kind of uh, solution. And the first one of the first lamps, of course, was the vacuum that you see here. The one here is a vacuum, is the first, was the first one yeah. introducing that technology. And what is interesting today is that in this, as you saw in this version, we started using, instead of rods, we started using like flat, flat sheet of metal, which brings the, which brings the design possibility even broader and even more interesting because we can really now imagine flat surfaces which are, you can attach and glue to, to them any type of light. So this ring, which also recalls the ring from where you used to blow soft bubbles, this ring now just gets the bubbles attached to it. And magically, because it's a very magic piece, it's a very uh, playful piece, magically it holds your bub the bubbles in the space in a very beautiful way. Uh, another thing that's what you saw here <clears throat> is is the version with a sphere, which is frosted. It's a frosted sphere, very beautiful, diffuse light. And there are three sizes of sphere. It's 110, 130, I always... 20, 110, 100. 130, and 140. Yeah. So the, these spheres can be connected to the ring in all different positions. I mean, the ring has its own fixed LED spots. Yes. But besides that, you can put the big ones outside, the small ones inside. You can basically screw them because they have a screw system in glass. You can screw them to the structure more or less whenever you want. But now the magic arrives and I will change you this sphere. I will change you to the, this sphere, which is the, the one which really speaks about most of the concept. Because as you see, this version is an amazing uh, iridescent glass with a really beautiful color of uh, the light breaks into. So it's an iridescent glass with a small frosted sphere inside and also diffuse the light really well. But then this one really gets that magic level and feeling of really having soap bubbles into your space that are just... Yeah, that's a beautiful one. It has a kind of oily rainbow finish on the glass. And then you have the same frosted bubble on the inside. Nice. So. It's beautiful, in a way, this piece, it's very beautiful for an innovation in technology. It's very yeah. beautiful for his playfulness, for his uh, happy design, because again, it connects to that memory. But it's also very versatile. And when I say versatile, besides the fact of having three different sizes and the frosted and the transparent, it's very versatile in the way it's hanging, because we had, it, uh, we had it at the beginning just vertical and then we start starting and then oh, let's put it also horizontal. Because mm -hmm. horizontal, if you put even one small on top of a six people table, it's perfect. That's a great mm -hmm. light, beautiful. But then with the three cable that connects them, because it's connected with three cables going to the ceiling, mm -hmm. of course then the position of, the, of each ring can really basically have, have any shape. Any shape in space can be from flat straight. You could even have flat straight on a, on a wall. You can have it flat like this on a table. Or you can have it like in this, a really organic um, um, free form uh, cluster of lamps. Mm -hmm. And being so, I, I believe that this technology brings us also to the ability to design something extremely pure, extremely simple it's just circles it's spheres and a circle it's very pure so in a way it's also very uh passepartout in the way that i could see these lamps clustered in this loft but i could see them really well into a very classic palace because you could put them also in a more correct way one on top of the other in a geometrical way to create a sort of chandelier more classical chandelier i could see them in a countryside i mean 
the beauty is that each this project really owns each space that it is in because of its simplicity, because of this poetry, because of its beauty. It really can merge and adapt and own really any type of space, uh, typology of space or size of space because it's of course modular in a way. So mm -hmm. I think it's a very special new uh, new new piece. Well, I'll be very um, interested to see how. Um... Marcel Wonder Studio applies it in their projects uh, and the versatility of the design and, and the installation possibilities are endless. Um, because we have an um, A&D audience, I just want to clarify that the, the, the lamp is hanging from two cable points from the canopy that of course is the in and out of the, the power supply of the electric sandwich. And then the third cable is the one that you sort of adjust to <laughs> To position it at the various angles. Um, I want to encourage everybody to um, please, if you have some questions that you would like to add to our discussion, to place them in the chat and we can answer your questions directly. Hold on, Gab, just a minute. Uh, uh, oh, Gab wants to um, talk about something that's part of the installation process. At the very end of the installation of the Hubble Bubble, you should scan this little device that's on your lamp which is called the button, which is a very special initiative that we are working on at Moy. And I think Gab, would you want to talk about it a little bit? I think it would be perfect if you explain it. I think yeah, it's, okay. a more, it's a very, I'm very proud as a designer and as, you know, as, as, as Moy dealing with this little super technological little genius that looks like a simple button, but is an extremely more complex system and uh, is, the simplicity of the name, the button, but there's a complex technology inside of it that you can scan. It's an NFC technology inside. The, the reason Moy created the button was to protect original design, which of course is very important to us at Moy. And that each of the Moy products come now with the button where you can scan. I think Gab's gonna show this now. You can scan the button with your phone, just open the camera. And uh, and then you register here uh, your product. Uh, you have the, the ID number, and then you can register it for warranty, extended warranty. And in the future, we will use the button to have a direct communication with uh, with um, our clients and our product through our products. So, so which is an amazing thing because you know, um, authorship. And intellectual property is something that unfortunately in the design world we see a lot of counterfeits. And I'm super, it's super as usual, Moy goes, thinks out of the box and goes beyond what normal people would say that would, would pursue counterfeits. Moy is just thought, no, let's celebrate authorship instead of pursuing counterfeit, which is it's just a beautiful way to do it. And it's beautiful for designers to see a company that really uh, creates and invents something which cannot be replicated to make you sure that you have an authentic Moi piece and then it's unique to your number and it's registered. So thank you more for doing this. It's something which really uh, is unique. Nice, yes, we're very proud of it. Um, are there any questions from anybody? I will ask again if anybody wants to um, leave any questions. Um, Gab, yeah, maybe um, we have a few minutes here and we didn't really touch on the creative process behind the lamp. Um, you know, the process at Marcel Wander Studio, as, as you have said before, can be quite chaotic. And I'm curious to hear a bit about like what, how, how the lamp started, what was the process? I remember seeing lots of crazy handmade prototypes. Did we, did we talk about this? Not sure, but it, it, we talked about how we see in the vision and how we see things, but not I, at the beginning, but really this, again, this project since is, is really like technological driven and new in the studio. In fact, we, uh, we had to really go out there and find pieces to code and to put lights on. So it is, it is a, an abnormal, it's a more hands-on process. It's more uh, research and, and try and research and try and test and try and so on. So it's, it's very different than other type of projects. Uh, it's fun because we were sent out from the studio to just go around and, and get to the, to the studio any type of big metallic pieces of frames or structures in order to test and code and see how that mm. works. Mm. Uh, 
so that yeah there was a lot of of, uh, of trials to reach you know the thing is that the most the most simple things yeah. look <laughs> most of the times the more the complex process. they are yeah, exactly it's, it's not it's, it's not easy uh, to hide that's what we do we we speak about poetry we design with poetry or we use technology which is hidden and to hide technology in order to not speak about it but to use it in a smart way and this speaks about what touches souls, the souls and the hearts of people, which is the poetry. That's because that's big complex. <laughs> Are we getting a couple questions through the chat now? Um, I think um, I should point out that you did a bad thing, Gab, by removing the button from the object, <laughs> because uh, normally the button is installed um, on the Moi product in different locations. If it's a lamp, you'll probably usually find it on the cord. If it's an upholstered piece, you'll find it somewhere near the Moi logo. <clears throat> so um, you should not remove the button. I just did it for you guys to show you so near, otherwise it would have been a bit far. So I will put it back as soon as we finish, promise. Um, I have some more questions about, um, somebody is asking how um, you could envision the light hanging in someone's home. I mean, your home is a very modern loft to height space. So of course we make an installation in the void there, but how can you envision uh, like um, people using this in, in other ways? Normal in house. I think that that's exactly when we started thinking that the lamp instead of just like this should have been like this because it does the right amount of, uh, in a normal height of a normal house, which is 260 or be like under this mezzanine with a, with a dining table, if you put only one as a circle, flat circle is amazing, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. mostly because from far you would see only a line of spheres, but when you sit on the table, you have a halo of kind of a, a sort of circle. It's beautiful because you discover a second layer of the lamp. On another way, I could also see it very much beautiful at the entrance in a door, hanging again, almost against the wall in mm -hmm. a circle, hanging as a circle, as almost a mirror in a way without mirror, and creating a beautiful uh, light washing uh, in, the, in, the, in the wall. So there is an, 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 uh, really an, an enormous amount of possibilities. Also, of course, playing, we play always not with geometry, we play a bit of random positioning. But I think it, it really works really well also if we make it more geometrical and more organized. It really works yeah. well, like also you know, in a different kind of way. So uh, the light amount is perfect, it's beautiful, whether it's a six people dining or 12 you can put also for instance if you have a really long table of 12 people or so on you can put even three sure. one here one here one here two small one and one big one in the middle or flat i mean it's really infinite a type of possibilities i have a i have a few children uh, yelling outside my door right now apologies um, but of course, uh, you can you can also use this in projects other than home. So how could you see it installed in a big? I think you talked about a palace, but uh, how could you? Well, see you know, normally when we have in in hotels, most of the times we have uh, voids of three, four, five floors, or we have, uh, and that in that case, I would really imagine to put them and use them in a beautiful growing cloud of little bubbles that goes up in the, in the air. Uh, but also, you can use them also in a very, very cozy areas. Because again, if you have a really small room with a round table, like the container table, like six people, normal ceiling, just you put one straight flat on the table, which is a round table with a round lamp, it's a, it's a really an amazing set. So it can be some, from very cozy to very complex. And the beautiful thing is that it's the light that it outputs, it's amazing. It's a very strong light if it's used with all the power, not very strong, but it's correct amount of light. Uh, but as soon as you dim it in the, from mid to low, it creates this halo and this atmosphere of warm, cozy light, which is really amazing. It creates a, a such a reassuring and an uplifting space, a soothing, soothing experience of light, which is amazing and that I've hardly seen in, uh, in, in some lights. Yes, I um, am getting another question about um, the button, actually. Uh, just to be clear about the button, um, I'm getting a question about, yes, um, somebody asking about, of course, we know that copying is a problem in the world of design, in particularly, Moy has to fight this um, in the area of lighting. So, uh, of course, the, the idea of the button actually came out of 
uh, the fact that we are trying to uh, fight the copying of products at Moy, we try to make designer dreams come true. And then if, you know, their designs are ripped off <laughs> the next day, then, uh, then the designers don't benefit financially from their original ideas. So uh, many years ago, the initiative of the button started for that reason. And with the button, you have a unique code. So every object has a unique code that registers it as a, a Moy original piece. And without this button, this is the only way that you guarantee that it's a certified Moy product. The NFC code that's on the inside is original to each piece. So they're all unique, they're all original. And that is how we, uh, to the best of our ability, can try to fight the, the issue with uh, copying in the market. So, the button, an amazing little... <laughs> Technological <laughs> genius. Yeah, really cool. Super cool. Um, okay, I think uh, we've covered most of the questions and uh, I think we're going to wrap up the chats. I want to thank everybody for joining today. I see that there's quite a few participants still in the chat. That's always nice to see at the end of a conversation. And uh, Gab, thank you so much for opening your home and telling us all about the inspiration behind the product and uh, really appreciate your time. Very, very happy to have done that. And thank you everyone to have listened and to be here and being uh, uh, loving. I hope you're going to enjoy our, our Peace soon, as soon as it's ready. And I wish you all the best and to be safe. Thanks. Yes, you thank too. you, everyone. And thank you, Moy, of course. <laughs>